What's up, guys? Super fucking professional there. He's closing all his apps. Um, what's up, guys? It's Kevin here from Passion Forward Always. It's been a while since I made that. Uh, this was a mistake. <laughs> hey guys, Kevin here. So I'm gonna be doing a new series where I'm gonna be essentially going through my friend's closet. So my friends are actually gonna be picking five items out that they like in their closet and they are gonna be explaining them and they're just talking about why they chose those five items. So this is my friend Mila. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna nut. Look at, Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Look at Episode 2. That guy. <laughs> Wait. Do I look jacked? <laughs> so today, we're going to be going through five of his items. I've asked him to pick out five of them, and yeah, let's get started. So this is the first one. Here, you hold it. This is less important. Um, so this is from the new Undercover Collection, uh, SS19, the New Warriors. So this is uh, a vest from the Dead Hermit, so it's based off of the Warriors, which are like gangs and the new warriors are essentially gangs so there's like the dead hermits which are like the psychedelic rock and roll guys and there's like golf guys like blads and stuff but this basically just came out and i've been anticipating the the collection for a while so like as soon as i saw it out i basically just like instantly copped mm -hmm. it so this is cool because it's like a sleeveless vest um well obviously it's sleeveless if it's a vest but yeah, it's like yeah. a sleeveless like bomber jacket um, so it has like the Dead Hermits logo mm -hmm. going to the Underworld, which I imagine like as their album or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And it has the, the thing like huge on the back. It's, it's pretty well made. Um, I'm planning on like pinning it up and stuff, maybe turn it into like a battle vest or something like that. Okay, this. cool, cool, cool. So what drove you to, I guess, like Jun Takahashi's brand like Undercover compared to like some other punk um, brands? Um, so, uh, I think Undercover is like, it's been around since the late 80s. Yeah, yeah, like, of course. Um, one of the OGs, I think his earlier collections like Scab really got me into it. Mm -hmm. um, the newer collections for me are hit or miss, but when I saw this collection it was definitely a must have. Mm -hmm. um, but it's basically just like the history behind the brand being about the music and stuff like that. So okay. um, It's not like a, ban a brand for the sake of being a brand in my opinion, it's mm -hmm. like actually about something. What different ways do you think you can style this piece? Because I know like versatility is like super mm -hmm. big ones. So, the rock and roll way, mm -hmm. no shirt, vest open, okay. skinny jeans and boots. Ooh, um, I'm, I'm not a BDSM shit. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> but, um, so the way I primarily wear it, uh, so basically I wanted a vest, so one of my friends posted a picture on Instagram that I basically considered inspo and I said yeah. to send it to me. But basically ever since I saw that picture, it's basically like a punk dude, like an actual punk dude, not like a fashion punk dude, but okay. he has like a battle vest over a hoodie. Um, with skinnies and boots, so basically, ever since I saw that, I wanted a vest, so. Okay. Um, that's very, uh, basically how I wear this, so I just wear it over a hoodie. Um, what other pieces from this current collection, I guess, do you see yourself maybe picking up in the future, or some other pieces that you think um, are interesting? So, there is uh, this leather rider, mm -hmm. it basically has the same graphic on the back. Yeah, yeah. Um, that one's kind of iffy, because... Uh, since the collection is so new, there's only like certain sizes out. And mm. I'm a bigger guy, so I yeah. need like size four definitely, but mm. I like a finer size two. So that's one thing that I want. Um, it's also really expensive, so that's kind of one of the things that's holding me back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, other than that, there's like bomber jackets. They have like flags for each uh, band mm. or each gang. Yeah. Um, which I would want just like as a collector's piece, basically. Mm. The other gangs are pretty cool as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so like there's the Bloody Eakers, which are like sociopathic nerds yeah and um there's a there's like a coach jacket on from them and it, it looks camo but when you look at it closely it's like anime characters big old anime titties oh fuck yeah big old <laughs> apple teeth there's a lot of stores that'll have like so i went to dover street in mm -hmm. la and they had this um and it was like like 900 bucks um, but if you go online and look at like the undercover stores mm -hmm. um, in Japan, so there's three undercover stores that sell stuff online. Um, the same vest is like 500 bucks, mm -hmm. so I just proxied it through from Japan. Okay. Um, and they shipped it to me. It's pretty fast, but uh, it's it's really like an underrated way to get stuff because um, stuff ends up being a lot cheaper mm -hmm. directly from Japan rather than having people stop you. Okay, I got you. I got you. All right. The next item? So, for the next thing I have, um, so it's not really like a huge designer brand. They're actually just nudie jeans. Mm. Um, but uh, these are 
basically self-modified beauty jeans, um, inspired by Undercover 85 denim. Uh, so I don't know if you know, but those are like insanely destroyed denim. Yeah. Uh, so I basically took the same inspiration. I've wanted those for a while, but those are like going for like 2K right now. Yeah, I just, it's cause like so many, I guess, big influencers yeah. like them and they like to wear them. And like, yeah, the archive hype and stuff. Yeah, um, definitely. Obviously this isn't like on the same level as that, mm -hmm. but it's something that I'm just slowly working on. And I think this piece in particular is pretty special to me because, um, I picked up sewing just so I can do this. Oh shit, okay. Uh, but yeah, basically every couple of weeks I just give a new ribs and give it patches and stuff. So. Okay, okay. So then you said you picked up sewing specifically to like try something like this out? Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a lot of stuff where I feel like, uh, obviously there's difficult stuff to make, mm -hmm. but I think picking up skills like sewing, in addition to hobbies, mm -hmm. like especially fashion, mm -hmm. is really useful because um, Obviously, like this, I don't have to spend two thousand dollars on pants. Yeah, it saves you a fuck ton of money. Um, these nudies were like a hundred bucks, and mm -hmm. I wasn't as afraid to fuck them up. Yeah, plus yeah. it, it's like way more personal if you do it yourself. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, how would you style these guys? Like, would it be in like the same vein as like the vest prior, or like is um, there anything else that like you'd like to? So, these are actually a little bigger on me. Okay. Um, these are like straight cuts. Mm, okay. Uh, I usually wear them with like bigger shirts and like bigger jackets mm -hmm. um, and combat boots typically. Okay. Um, I took sandpaper and I just sanded it all over just okay. to like hyper age it. Yeah. So like if you look on the back, I, I didn't really work on the back that much yet. It's mainly been the front, but there's yeah. still that, that kind of like aging look. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like here you can see like it's been used. That's just sanding it all. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously I've been trying to wear it as much as I can too, but... Yeah, of course, of course, like trying to get some natural wear into it. Yeah, I um, gotcha. and then what I would do is basically just take scissors and slash like random parts of it, like mm -hmm. right here, and then I'll sand the holes. Um, okay. One thing that I noticed recently that it actually looks a lot better is if I just sand holes into it, so I just keep sanding it until there's a hole and I just rip it open. But that takes like forever, Yeah, you gotta go through all the layers. Yeah, yeah but I mean, it looks better, so... I guess. You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Um, but, yeah, basically, you go through, sand it, tear holes, and then you patch it under. Um, it was pretty hard learning how to sew at first. You mm -hmm. can see, like, a lot of the places where I messed up. Mm -hmm. But then, like, if you get, like, over here, you can see the quality actually gets a lot better mm -hmm. than, like, for example, up here. And it's a lot more, um, like, even. Yeah. Okay, okay, damn. So, these are... The mosquito stompers? Yeah. <laughs> I think this, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, but these are the Rick uh, Fall Winter 17, I believe, glitter Lego boots. Uh, so, yeah, these are cool because I think this is the first time you do the lacing like this. Mm -hmm. And it has, like, the sole is actually made from blocks of wood. Mm -hmm. And there's, like, see through parts in there and so. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I think this was, like, one of my first, like, bigger purchases. Mm -hmm. uh, and it kind of, like, in a bad way, it made me less afraid to purchase more expensive stuff because, like, I've already done it before. <laughs> Your PayPal account, like, Fuck. yeah, basically. <laughs> but um, I think these were like the first like high fashion piece I really wanted. Really? And, like, yeah, I had like I had a job by then, mm -hmm. so I was like, why not? Thank God. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm like those broke ass bio students, huh? Um, but yeah, I don't wear Lego boots that break on me. That was actually really loud. Oh, I'm so happy. Like I joked about and I hurt your feelings about, um, you had some complications with this guy. Yeah. You want to talk about that? <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking like a news anchor? <laughs> Basically, there's wood in these, mm -hmm. and they don't. Wood doesn't flex that much. Wow. Uh, so when you flex the foot, sometimes the sole uh, rips off because uh -huh. it's not. It's not like. Um, it's not like sewn into the foot. The foot, the shoe. Uh huh. <laughs> it's glued on. <laughs> uh -huh. So sometimes when you flex it too hard, it comes off, uh, and the the toe part, uh, I believe this one came off. So would you say you were flexing too hard in these? I was flexing. Is that what you're saying? You're flexing too hard. I'm gonna ignore that. Anyway, it was kind of annoying because uh -huh. like the Rick store, they'll fix it, but I, I got it from someone else, so I had to send it to Antonio Antonioli. Uh -huh. I sent it to the Rick store. Okay. Fix okay. It. it took like a while, but. They actually made me pay customs on the way back. <laughs> yeah, and then I told them, and they, they just PayPal'd me the same amount. It was kind of weird. <laughs> okay, yeah. I mean, 
I guess. But like you said, this made you less afraid to buy more expensive shit. Yeah, so... What? Like, I feel like it would make me more expensive, or more worried to buy expensive stuff. Because like, it's like, oh shit, this, this thing that I paid X amount of money mm -hmm. for broke on me. And I would have been like, what the fuck? I don't think like, I don't think you should think about it like that. Okay. I think you shouldn't be afraid to fuck up your stuff. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, things like this is like a factory defect, but I made sure mm -hmm. when I got it that they mm -hmm. could fix it. Okay. But I don't know. Just don't be a bitch. So I worn <laughs> these with those. Yeah. Um, a lot of times I like to stack it over the shaft. Mm-hmm. Because. <laughs> uh huh. So when you stack it over the shaft, uh -huh. I don't know. I, I feel like a lot of times when you tuck in boots, it's like, oh shit, look at my boots, you know. Mm -hmm. But like, kind of understating these are better, in my opinion, anyways. Um, really? Yeah, because. But like, these are such aggressive boots. I think that it's. it's like... I, I just think it's really corny when it's like, oh, you're wearing like understated like shirt and pants, and then you got these fucking big ass boots. Like everything needs to be on the same level. But I mean, if you if you are wearing skinny pants, mm -hmm. um, tuck them in, of course. Mm -hmm. I, I know there's people like Donut Alien and this other guy uh, on Instagram mm -hmm. that do shit like that, but they're also smaller guys. Okay. So I feel like as a bigger guy too, it's like I have these big ass massive legs mm -hmm. and then like tucking them in makes my feet also look huge. So it just looks like I'm like T-Rex mode. Like your Kingdom Hearts character? Yeah, basically. So. Isn't that your inspo? <laughs> I'm not Sydney. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> oh, these are actually kind of... Yeah, those are heavy. Those are straight up like at least five pounds each. Jesus. Like I thought the Balenciaga Triple S's were heavy. This shit's super fun. Yeah. This is massive. Alright. Okay, so next item. Uh, so I have this Capital Boro jacket. Mm. And this is something I've actually wanted for a while. Um, I think when I hung out with um, Brandon. Yeah. We were at, at H. Lorenzo. I think it was like one of my first times going to like a really nice like fashiony place. And okay. I, I saw this. Yeah. And I wanted it, but at the time, um, I hadn't really purchased like anything super expensive. Okay. So it was kind of like out of my reach. So you're a bit like hesitant on buying it? Yeah. Um, and like, I basically just like, I knew I, I really wanted it because after like a month or so. Yeah. I was still thinking about getting this jacket. Mm -hmm. And then what happened was, um, Brandon, Brandon always bef befriends people that work in stores like essays and stuff. Okay. He was able to get me the hookup on it. So. Okay, I got. I was a bit able to. It was still pretty expensive, but I was able to get it for a little less than uh, retail. That's always nice. Than most people fun. be able to get it, but yeah, it's it's really dope because it's like reclaimed denim. Mm -hmm. The inside has this like yeah, like, that's New what Mexico I was noticing. Interior. It's actually really warm because of this inside layer. Yeah, I bet shit. Um, but yeah, it's like reclaimed denim with Sashiko stitching. Mm -hmm. But could you talk a bit more about Capital and like why, or I guess specifically this piece, why you were drawn towards it? Um, so I think just like the vest, I'm into like more crustier pieces. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was really inspired by Scab when I first saw it. It's okay. like the first thing that got me into Undercover. Mm -hmm. And I think after Scab, um, I just really got into like, because I listen to like hardcore and metal and stuff. Yeah, uh, I think I'm into that look, but like also being into fashion, mm -hmm. you can all, always like mix that look with like band tees and shit. Mm -hmm. And I think this is like a nice like crusty piece, because mm -hmm. obviously it's like fucked up down. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely But distressed. at the same time, it's like a really nice piece. You can see the craftsmanship that went into it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you can wear it with like normal stuff in my opinion. I just wear like a, a normal trucker sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, as for Capital itself, like they have all these Boro pieces. Yeah. Um, they'll have like different Boro shirts, Boro hats, and stuff. But I think Capital is is a really underrated brand. I know it's actually on the rise right now, so I should, yeah. probably shouldn't say that. But I mean, like a lot of people have been like turned on to it. Yeah, lately. yeah. Uh, it's just like one of those Japanese brands that really does its own thing, and like they have a really good uh, quality to price ratio, especially okay. if you get it straight from Japan. Mm. Um, and and they do a lot of cool stuff. Like it's a lot of stuff I feel like I don't see many people doing. Okay. Um. Okay, so sorry, we had to cut really quick. <laughs> I just spit uh, all the rice <laughs> <laughs> oh, We're never gonna finish this. So, Milad had to do a quick, like, you know, just for just for the next piece, because the next piece just gets some, like, real hard and moist. Fuck you. This is the last one. Uh, so, this is a Black Means Double Rider. Um, specifically, it's the Sid Vicious. Damage Rider. Uh, so this is from Black Means, which is like 
big leather company in Japan. Oh, well, I guess it's not like big, but it's a Japanese company that specializes in leathers and like punk gear and stuff. Okay. Uh, so this is cool because they like hand distress all of these, and there's like a video online where it shows okay. like his process for doing this. Obviously, it's yeah, not yeah, the yeah, exact yeah. one, but it's really it, dope. It's super damn like thick and like heavy. Holy yeah. shit! It's like super heavy duty. Damn. So. What drove you to choose black means in specific? Like, because I know a lot of other, I guess, premium Japanese companies also do like some sort of like leather jacket. But why did you choose black means in specific? So uh, I got into black means from the pouches. Okay. Um, the fucking mean pouches. I'm gonna put it somewhere over here. So like, I looked into them more, and mm -hmm. basically they're like brand ethos was something that I really liked. Um, they're really about the music, kind of like undercover um, mm. back in the day. Maybe not so much now, but uh, they're just like a couple of punks that know how to use leather. And they they do stuff like they rent out uh, the basement of their building to like bands to practice and stuff. They're really like active in the Japanese punk scene, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. from the stuff that I saw from them. Uh, but this I, I jumped in on because, uh, so Newbie in Tokyo, uh, which is like a, a store, mm -hmm. In Japan, they they had like a pop up with black means, and their sizing is really small. And like I said before, I'm kind of a bigger dude, and uh, so like Japanese sizing is usually like one, two, three, four, but like a size four for them is more like a size medium for us. Okay. Whereas like typically size fours are like L's or XL's. Or yeah, yeah. So this is actually size six. So holy shit! Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen like a size six. Like yeah. I've seen up to like a four or five, very rare. Yeah. But six, holy shit. Yeah, so it, it actually goes up to seven for these. Oh, okay. Um, but I got a size six because obviously you want the, the fitted rider. Yeah, of course. Um, but like I saw the size six, I've always wanted a rider from Black Means because mm -hmm. uh, of the ethos and stuff, all that stuff that I said. And then the instant I saw the size six, um, I just hit up Newbie and I was like, hey, I need this. Okay. So, so you mentioned the ethos a few times. Like, Do you want to explain it a little bit? So I think like all the stuff that I like, um, they're kind of, obviously it's about the clothes, but they're also about something else other than the clothes. Like, okay. Black Means is really about, like, uh, being yourself, like, being punk, and then Undercover, obviously, like, in a bunch of interviews, he said he's just always punk. It's mm -hmm. just always him. Yeah. Um, so I don't really think punk, like, being punk necessarily correlates to punk music. Yeah. Um, it's just being, like, a rebel, essentially. Yeah, it's just being yourself, against. and, like, I think brands that just try to be like themselves that's just something I'm into okay I got you so it's it's the authenticity then. it's yeah. that okay cool 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 so what different ways would you style this leather jacket like I'm sure that there's a bunch of versatile ways that you could definitely write this yeah so um, when it's when it's about to rain I wear it over a hoodie okay so I can have that hood mm -hmm. um, most of the time I'll just wear it with like a tucked in tee with like skinny denim okay and like um, like docks basically okay uh, that's usually how I wear it most of the time. I, I think just like being having like a cleaner look mm -hmm. with the rider is nicer, especially with something like this. If you wear it with like distressed denim, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to have like too much stuff going on because mm -hmm. this is already like kind yeah, of a big piece. Yeah, of course, it's, it's very course. noticeable. It's it's very much a highlight piece. Then. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like you don't want to look like you're acting out. Yeah, so. you don't want to be like you don't want to look like you're from Greece. Uh -huh. But you also don't want to look like you walked out of a garbage can, so... Um. I mean, but I thought that was your ethos. <laughs> Do you have any advice for people who are trying to find their own style? Like, maybe talk about your experiences and like, trying to find your own style, your own like, look, yeah. your own aesthetic. So I think like... I honestly would describe my style right now as like Japanese garbage can. Okay. Because uh, it's really like, like distressed clothes, but mm -hmm. most of it's like Japanese clothes, obviously. Mm -hmm. But um, I think when I first started, I, I really tried to emulate like, oh, except Rocky, he looks mm -hmm. dope. I look like him, but obviously like I'm not built like him, so it's not gonna look the same one. Yeah, but basically I just like found stuff I liked try to emulate it, saw what worked and what didn't, and eventually I just took a bunch of different stuff. Um, I think a lot of the stuff that I keep now is stuff that I got from friends that I'm not like, oh, I don't want to 
look a certain way, but like what you're doing is cool and I like it. Mm. Like um, like with Brandon I talked about earlier, yeah. I, I never wore rings until I, I started hanging out with him and I was like, oh dude, that's kind of dope. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just started buying more rings. It's just stuff like that. Um, my other friend Rick, he's the one that got me into like undercover and that was kind of like the gateway to a bunch of Japanese brands. Okay. Is there anything else that you want to talk about in specific about, I guess, your style, your aesthetic, your look? Um, no. No? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do you want to, where can people find you? Any um, plugs? Yeah, you can find me and my shit fits on Instagram, uh, at Nilad, N-N-E-E-L-A-D. Uh, uh -huh. I think one person I want to shout out for, or on Instagram, is a guy called Casino Riv. Uh, so it's just Casino underscore R-I-V. He's doing a lot of things, um, like scanning a lot of like old undercover magazines and uploading them online for anyone to look at. Okay. So that's just something like every time I uploads, I just download it, and then I, I just like scroll through whenever I'm bored. It's it's a lot of the, uh, like the older undercover stuff, which is really cool. Okay. But I, I think like spreading knowledge like that is really dope. So he's a cool guy. Okay. Cool. All right, thank you so much, and fuck him. Visit, visit his Instagram. Fucking talk so much shit about it, okay? Uh, make sure that he knows that he is garbage. <laughs> 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 he tripped over this shit again. He's garbage. Uh, I'll talk to you guys I don't know later. Uh, adios, buenos noches.